Hello, welcome back to the channel. It is it's actually Friday. Um, I'm off on Monday, so you won't actually see this till Tuesday. But uh, what I've done is I've put together a video, um, a bit of a first look around this uh, brand new DX85-7. Um, I hope you enjoy the video and uh, if you've got any questions about it, let me know down in the comments because uh, I'd be keen to hear your thoughts. Let's have a look at this brand new DX85. So for me, these have been long awaited. Um, the previous, well, previously it was a DX80, then it was the 85. The only real difference between the DX80 and the 85 was the screen in the cab and uh, the introduction of the DPF filter. Um, so yeah, we'll start in here. We've got nice big moulded fuel tank. That fuel tank looks huge. That fuel tank looks a decent size. I bet that's bigger than the previous 85s, which some folk would say it wasn't big enough. Isolator switch there in that door. Up on here, there's another door. I've locked it, but in there you can access your dipstick for the slew motor. This here's your changeover valve for, to change between one way and two way on the joint on the um, on the the hammer lines. Um, so that was previously hidden away under the cab and the amount of phone calls I used to get, how do you swap between one way and two way, uh, was unreal. Um, in here you've got the radiator pack, refueling pump is down there, here's the pipe work for it. And the uh, hydraulic oil level, nice and easy to see, very nice. In here, this will be the biggest difference. We've gone from a Yanmar engine to a Doosan engine in this, four-cylinder Doosan. This machine isn't on AdBlue, I would imagine. Yes, it is. It's on EGR and DPF, so should be okay. Um, everything's dead handy to get to. Fuel filter, engine oil filter, another fuel filter there. Fan belt, air conditioning. Um, air filter, it all looks dead handy to be getting out, even the engine oil filler cap's handy. And there's loads of space in here as well, so you know, if I needed to be on the other side, working on the other side of that engine, which, looking at it, the starter motor will be on the other side of the engine. I can easily stick my head in and look up on top, get in among the turbo. It's good like. The very first time I've had a look at these, I knew they were coming, I think they were meant to be coming in March. Is it Matt? No, can't have been. But certainly back end of last year they were supposed to be coming. And then round in here we've got the pump. So there's no firewall separating it. Another difference as well between this model, this 85 and the outgoing 85 is the engine was mounted next to the cab. Um, so the engine's now at the back of the cab. I've had a quick drive of it and to be honest with you, it's certainly a lot quieter uh, in the cab than the previous ones. We've got the uh, bleh, hydraulic pump here, pilot pump here, presumably pilot accumulator, pilot cut off. Uh, not too sure what that one will do just now. And pilot uh, filter, all handy to get into. So I'll shut all the doors and we'll jump in the uh, we'll jump in the cab and have a look. So I'll have a quick walk around the outside so you can get a look at the shapes of it and everything. But another thing that I've noticed is this blade. Hell, it looks heavy, doesn't it? All of this is all filled in. Is it filled in underneath? It is. That's a real heavy looking blade, that if you ask me. Um, this whole knuckle as well. This is all looking a lot different to the outgoing model. And there's something about that boom as well. That boom looks a little larger. Uh, so yeah, it's nice, sort of quite angular, quite clean. There's nothing too dramatic about it, I suppose, but it looks good. The cab looks good and spacious. We'll jump in there and have a look now. So up in the cab, first thing I immediately notice about it um, is how light it feels. 
and this curved glass window comes back a decent uh, way and when I've moved it earlier I had the boom all the way back and uh, the visibility of the top knuckle there is excellent if you're working in among trees you don't have to sort of lean forward and crane your neck up um, which is a nice feature looks like there's uh, catches on here for a possible additional extra of a roof blind just on those sunnier days when you don't want it uh, glaring at you but this particular machine hasn't got it installed if it is an option um, yeah and then you've got the familiar dashboard of the newer machines like the 14 tonners and the joysticks rev dial and the blade is on the right hand side i know with the 14 tonners with the blades the levers on the left hand side here so this joystick assembly also comes up like that for better access in and out of the cab and then you've got the red pilot lever here lifts up and down but it does feel nice and airy nice sliding window here and also this is on like a doubt it will be but it's like a ram mount type of an idea and um, so you can position that into you know whatever suits cup holder there it's the small things like cup holders and things like that that uh, folk appreciate but yeah it does it does feel bigger than the previous cab, I'm not sure if it is. Nice glasses case holder in here. Very good. Right, I'll uh, grab my keys and we'll fire it up. So it's got the familiar dashboard layout minus the add blue level, obviously. Um, and at the moment you can see we're in dig mode, so if you want to change that you can tap it and it alternates between hammer two way and dig you've also got a keypad here you can do the same thing so you can see i'm pressing this button here and it's changing it i've also got a keypad for your two speed power lights wipers uh your uh, backup alarm turn that on and off overload wine and beacon here so I'll fire it up now and see how it sounds I don't know about you, but it is very quiet. I don't know if you could tell that I started the engine there or not. I'll have to listen to it back. Another thing that I've noticed, this is for one of my particular customers that likes a coat hook in his cab. It's one thing you complained about on the previous Dash 5s. No coat hook. Coat hook's there for you. Right, I'll, uh, I'll have a drive of it now and uh, see what we think. Throttle up. I'm gonna, this is going to be hard to do. Hang on. So if you have used a DX85 or a DX80 in the past, when I do this, if you know, you'll know. Bear with me. That is silky smooth, just pulling a grade. There's no sudden jump like that. Um, yeah, it's nice, and that's before I PDI'd it, so the lock valves will be to bleed up, um, just get any air out of them. Right, one more thing, because this is in, eating into my lunch break, but uh, another thing that I've noticed as well is the boom offset is lovely and progressive. There's no sharpness about it, it's very nice and smooth. Unless you jerk it like I did. Very good, I like it. Right, thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. For more bits and pieces throughout the week, head over to Ali's Digger Diary on TikTok and Instagram. 
I'll be back at work tomorrow, which will be Tuesday, and uh, yeah, back to normal business. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.